Welcome to my channel. I do uh, five requested reactions, not every day, but, uh, and I've been skipping days lately, but I used to do them every day and now I've kind of cut back a little bit because I need some rest, but I'm going to do five today. But before I do that, I want to share something with you. I've been looking on YouTube for stories about miraculous healings because I think it's important that you know that they exist and secondly because there are several people on my channel that have shared that they are fighting with disease some of them very serious diseases and I want you to know and understand that God can heal you I'm not saying quit going to the doctor. You have to use common sense. But God is a healer and he can heal you from whatever it is that, that is bothering you, whatever sickness or illness or disease that you're fighting. God can heal you. All you have to do is ask him. And go to him in belief, in faith and ask for his healing and he will heal you that's what he is the healer Jehovah Rapha and so I want to share this video with you uh, because it's a wonderful story and it tells you what can happen if you believe in God so let's watch this together Well, I'm laying in the ambulance and I'm trying to breathe and it's just, it's getting shallower and it's getting harder and I just couldn't push air anymore. Like it just wouldn't go through. Um, and I just looked up at them and I just whispered, this is my last breath. And that's the last thing I remember. July of 2016, David Beezer lay dying in the back of an ambulance. The high school football coach was in need of several miracles. After a boating accident with his family on the Colorado River, left him fighting for life. I had been up and down through that area, you know, thousands of times. Um, each trip we would go, that was the only way to get in and out back to the, to where we were camping or where our house was. The sun was setting and it was coming down at, uh, at an angle, and you there was a glistening shimmer on the water, but you couldn't tell how deep it was. A sandbar had developed just inches under the water's surface since the last time David had cruised this stretch of the river. He drove his boat onto the sandbar at nearly 40 miles per hour. So we went from just going full speed, you know, with a boat full of people just having a great time, to zero within just a few feet. The full force of the collision was right on my neck. I'd hit the steering wheel right at my voice box and airway, and immediately I could feel it was becoming difficult to breathe. My first concern was my family, my kids, but the inability to really, I physically couldn't really do anything um, because I was in really bad shape. And I knew, I knew that I was in trouble. Without medical attention, he knew he would soon be unable to breathe. It became very difficult to breathe very quickly. And I could feel it tightening up and I could feel my airway starting to close. That was the time that, you know, uh, that you really cry out to God and say, you know, I can't do this and I'm going to need you to see us through this. And the only way that I could have peace was knowing that I knew who held my future. David and his family are Christians. As they prayed, they saw God's hand in their time of need. My wife tried to call 911 and we've been in that area a lot. and could never get a cell phone to work from that area. And, and we tried many times in the past, you know, to try to call and check on something back home and never gotten through. That day, the phone call immediately went through to 911. First responders quickly arrived at a nearby boat ramp, but had to wait for a sheriff's boat that was still 20 minutes away. Thankfully, an off-duty sheriff heard about the situation and rushed to the sandbar in his personal boat. If the off-duty sheriff that came for me had not come with certainty I would have died on the boat in front of my kids. While in transit to a hospital in Yuma, Arizona, he sent a text to a friend from church. 
I just said that we had been in an accident and that I thought everybody else was going to be okay. Uh, and I said that I was in bad shape. Uh, pray for me. Hundreds of people began praying for David as news got out about the accident. Before he reached the hospital, his lung collapsed and he passed out. Dr. Brian Weeks explains the severity of David's condition. What David experienced was what's called a laryngeal fracture, um, and it's absolutely a life-threatening injury because of its effects on the airway and, and the person who suffers its ability to breathe. His vocal cord area swelled, and when you swell in your airway, you die. Doctors were able to insert a breathing tube through the damaged area in his windpipe. He was then life flighted to St. Joseph's Hospital in Phoenix. David was placed in an induced coma for five days, giving his airway time to heal. The first trauma doctor, when I woke up, he looked at me and said, there's only one reason you're alive, G-O-D. And I knew it. Uh, I had been in that ambulance and, and I knew that uh, I needed a miracle to make it. After his release from the hospital, David experienced intense pain and difficulty breathing once again. He was readmitted for an emergency tracheotomy due to a growth in his airway called a granuloma. We describe that in, in layman's terms as proud flesh. It's, you know, tissue that grows in the setting of, of healing. And, you know, those, again, in a, in a small area like the airway, that can be very problematic. As doctors prepared to surgically remove the growth, they took another look in his airway and were surprised at what they didn't see. He went in with a camera and the mass was gone and he had never seen anything like it. He just looked at it and said, you know, it's not there. It probably was divine intervention. I know a lot of people were praying for David and a lot of people were, you know, had holding, up, holding him up in their thoughts and prayers. David was very fortunate that his granuloma did go away on its own and that saved a lot of time and, and an additional procedure. That's an easy one to explain, you know. God still does miracles. Just a week later, David had his trach removed and was calling plays for Christian high school football in San Diego. Thankful for the answered prayers and the healing that kept him alive. You know, I have a wife and kids and he's given me the ability to continue to be a dad. Um, I'm thankful for my friends who rallied for me incredibly, just the, the prayers of uh, school family, church family, um, just the outpouring of love. You never really realize how much you're loved until you go through a situation like this. There's times where you know that the game is beyond your level. And this situation was certainly, I knew that I had no role in staying alive. I mean, it was, it was God's hand and God's mercy alone that would keep me alive. That's enough. You get the point. I want you to know that I think the biggest reason why we don't see more healing is because we just don't think that we're worth it. We don't think that God cares that much. I'm going to share a personal story with you. In 2019, we rushed my wife to the hospital. She was having trouble breathing. She's asthmatic. She's diabetic. And she has a bad heart valve. And within about 72 hours, this was right around Valentine's Day, I remember it distinctly because I bought her flowers and I brought the flowers to the hospital for her to see. Within 72 hours she crashed and uh, a huge team of people descended into the room and they were working on her and they rushed her to ICU and they put her in an induced coma. And she was in an induced coma for 19 days. And of course I was praying and everyone that we knew was praying as well and one of the pulmonologists who was assigned to her case 
kept telling me over and over and over again, he said this multiple times, a healthy 15-year-old boy with what your wife is suffering from has about a 10% chance of living. She had what's called acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS for short. It's where the body can no longer breathe on its own. And she was on a ventilator. She was in a coma, induced coma, for 19 days. And before the crash, when she knew that she was struggling, she looked at me and she said, if it's my time to go, I'm ready. That was, that was tough. That was really tough. She may have been ready, but I wasn't. <laughs> and so, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I spent every single day with her at the hospital. I would be there all day and then I would go home at night because I had to, I knew that I had to get rest and take care of myself in order to take care of her. And towards the end of her stay in the hospital, the doctors basically had given up. They, they said, there's nothing else we can do. And I actually had gotten to the point where I had decided maybe it's time to pull the plug. But I had made a, an appointment with my daughters to go visit some long-term care facilities because the hospital said they, they weren't going to let her stay there very much longer because there was nothing else they could do for her. And so... I made the decision that I would take the girls with me to the long-term care facilities. We would check them out and then I would take them to lunch and I would tell them that it's time to say goodbye to your mother. But when we got to the long-term care facilities, they were all very positive. They said, bring her here. We'll, we'll get her better. So I went back to the hospital and I told the doctors, I want you to put a trach in. I want you to put a feeding tube in and I want you to transfer her to this facility. And so she was transferred there. And within about a week, she was off the respirator and breathing on her own. And after 90 days, 30 in the hospital, 30 in the long-term care facility, and then 30 days in rehab because she had to learn to walk again, she came home. Don't tell me that miracles don't happen because I know they do. They've happened for me. After she came home, I looked up on the web one day to see what is the chance of survival with ARDS under the following conditions and I listed all of her comorbidities. And what I found was that it was about 2%. Well, <laughs> zero is enough for God. Two percent made it easy for him. It's my prayer that even if you're not watching this video, somebody is, and it's my prayer that those people, along with me, will pray for your, your healing and that you will turn to God and ask him to be healed and that God will perform a miracle for you because he can do that and I believe that that is one of the reasons why I have this channel is because there are people on my channel who need healing and I want every single one of them to know that healing is available it's available to you you don't have to give up. You don't have to say goodbye. You can be healed. I'll be doing some more videos like this because I think it's that important. But I want you to know 
that your healing is in God's hands. And if you'll just ask him, if you'll just say, God, I need your help. The doctors can't help me anymore. I'm dependent upon you. God will come in and heal you in a miracle. I don't care what it is. If it's cancer, he'll remove it. If it's some other disease, he'll remove that. He created the heavens and the earth. He can certainly fix anything that's wrong with you. So, Father, I pray right now that you will enter the life of every person on my channel that has an illness. No matter what it is, Father, I pray that you will visit them with your angels and that you will lay your hands upon them and you will heal them. And I pray that that healing will restore them to complete health, 100% health, so that they can enjoy life and continue to live until the return. I thank you for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.